And so, I was born. The first people I remember seeing, were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down, so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice, or stupid personality. And the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for some reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms, he said he wanted me to jump up them, but I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them, that I decided it might be okay. The old man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said, the floor's made of lava. But when I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. When I reached the other side, the old man just smiled and said, that'll do, for now.
couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just, kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. But the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in a post office robbery, although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a pool, in a shoebox. The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together, to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dex job. Now now, said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Everybody clapped, except the important looking men. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? he asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. Okay okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. But I'm sure you'll be fine. Gary's then rearranged the room one last time, the old man smiled. Now now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. 
I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud.